take this cap off, use a 22 millimeter socket. Take it off by hand so you don't strip out these little caps. And slide it off. Take the lug nuts off, use the same 22 millimeter socket. Take the wheel off. Disconnect this wheel speed sensor wire. You can use some needle nose pliers or a screwdriver. Just pop that off there. And over here, get underneath here. And then it's kind of hard to see, but behind this shield, you have another retainer. And you want to disconnect the connector. You're going to have to feel around for it. There's a little tab. Pull up on the tab, slide the connector out. There's another retainer that's holding it down. Try to get underneath it with a trim tool. And pop it out. Now I'm gonna remove this bolt, use a 10 millimeter socket. This is for the brake hose bracket. Now grab that bracket, you should be able to slide it up. Now I'm going to take out the brake caliper bracket bolts. I'm going to take the caliper and the bracket off all as one with the brake pads. Use a 21 millimeter socket. Now grab the caliper. Use a brake caliper hanger and find a place to hang the caliper over here. I'm just going to hang it from the bracket for the hose, brake hose, and that seems like it's working fine. There's no tension on the hose. Now slide the brake rotor off. Now I'm going to take some side cutters and take this cotter pin out. Just bend it back. Try to grab it from the other side. This is a little bit rusty, so I'm just going to use a little rust penetrant. And use an 18 millimeter socket and loosen this bolt up. We're not going to take it off completely. And just leave a few threads on there. When you get to the end, just make sure there's a few threads on there. So that's good. There's many different tools that you can use to separate the ball joint from the knuckle. You could use a pickle fork. The only problem, if you use a pickle fork, you're probably going to ruin the upper ball joint bolt. And if you're not replacing the upper ball joint, you probably don't want to do that. There is other types that will push on the lower part of the ball joint and you can do that. Or carefully take a hammer and just give it a tap right there and you should be able to separate it. There we go, separated. Before we take the knuckle off, I want to separate the outer tie rod end and then also loosen up the lower ball joint. Remove this cotter pin, just use some side cutters. Oops. Now take a 22 millimeter socket, remove this nut. There's also other front end tools you can use to separate the outer tie rod from the knuckle, the pickle fork, you're probably gonna ruin the boot though, and then other types that push down on the nut. Or carefully, just use a hammer and give it a tap. And if you were replacing the outer tie rod, you could hammer right there, but you don't wanna do that because you could mushroom it over a little bit. 
we go. That's separated. Now I take the cotter pin off here. Use the same side cutters. And just bend it. And pull it out. Now I'm going to remove this nut. Use a 22 millimeter socket. And now I'm going to separate the lower ball joint from the knuckle. I am going to use the pickle fork. Again, if you are trying to save the boot, you probably don't want to do this method. There is other tools. Now that that's separated, just to make this removal process easier, I'm just going to take the nut and put it back on a couple threads. Now I'm going to pry down with the pry bar on the upper control arm, and then I can remove this nut. And let that go. And just move the knuckle away from the ball joint, from the upper. Now holding, supporting the knuckle. Then take this lower nut off. And slide the knuckle down. This vehicle has a grease fitting right here. I'm just gonna remove that so it doesn't get in the way. Use an eight millimeter wrench. Just take that off. Now you're gonna to need to use a ball joint press and just find the right adapters that work for you. Find one on the bottom that's gonna be bigger than the actual ball joint. And we're just gonna press it down. Because the upper control arm's in the way of my tool, I am just gonna loosen up the two nuts that are on the inside of the upper control arm. Just use a 21 millimeter socket. You can use a 21 millimeter wrench on the outside. Just when you tighten these back up, you want these cams in the exact location they were when you took them out. Either way, you should get an alignment after you've done this job. Just loosen this up. Now I can just tip that up and that's out of my way. Now I'm just going to use the tool and press out the ball joint. If you're having trouble getting the ball joint started with the tool, lower the vehicle down onto a jack stand so that the, just the lower control arm is supported by it. And now I'm going to take a hammer and just get this started, start to loosen it up. The reason why you support it is otherwise the vehicle is going to be moving around or the lower control arm is not going to be as rigid. So Now it started moving so I'm going to switch back to the tool. You might have better adapters than what I have here. Now we're going to install this the same way it came out, slide it up, find the right adapter cup that will fit and the top cup that will go so that it just slips over that. Make sure it's not crooked. Looking good. Yeah, make sure it's all the way down. That looks pretty good right there. Now get this upper control arm roughly at ride height when you took it off and just tighten the nut up. And torque this to 140 foot pounds. And 
and then do the same on the other side. Take the grease fitting, get that lined up and get it started. And take a seven millimeter wrench or socket and just snug it down. And take a grease gun and just give it a couple pumps of grease. That's good. Now grab the knuckle and line it up with the lower ball joint. It's a good idea to keep the nut in your hand. Let you get that started. Now we can line the upper ball joint up. Use a pry bar, pry down on the upper control arm, and get that nut started. Now I'm going to torque this nut to 81 foot pounds. Look for the, where the cotter pin's gonna go. If the hole doesn't line up, then just tighten it up a little bit more so that the cast silver nut lines up with the hole. And put the cotter pin through. Take the side cutters and just bend it and trim the excess. Now we'll tighten up the upper ball joint nut. And if the stud starts spinning, you can support the lower control arm and use a pry bar and pry down on the upper control arm. And torque this to 37 foot pounds. And if the cotter pin doesn't line up, the hole doesn't line up, tighten it up a little bit more. Now slide the cotter pin through and just use the side cutters and bend it. And just trim the excess. Now line the tie rod end up with the knuckle. And put the nut on and tighten this down to 44 foot pounds. And again, if the castle nut doesn't line up with the hole, then you can tighten it up a little bit more. And slide the cotter pin through and bend it with the side cutters. Now put the rotor on. I'm just going to put a lug nut on the rotor just to hold it from flopping around. Now take the caliper off the hanger and making sure the hose isn't twisted, slide the caliper back over the rotor. Make sure the pads are separated. Take the caliper bolts. You can put some thread lock adhesive on these bolts. There we go. And torque these bolts to 221 foot pounds. And line this bracket up, take the bolt, get that started. And tighten this down. And just snug it down. Now we take the wheel speed sensor harness and line that up. Push that, lock it down in the bracket. 
take this push pin right here, line that up. And the other push pin, you can't really see it behind there. And then you're going to connect the connector up there as well. And lock it down. Now I take the nut off the lug nut. And the lug nuts. Now I'm going to torque these lug nuts to 140 foot-pounds in a cross pattern to tighten the wheel down evenly. Now I'm just going to go around again, double check. Take the cover. Line it up, and just by hand, just tighten these down, just snug, not too tight. After you're done the job, keep in mind you should bring the vehicle to a local shop and have it aligned. You don't want to have premature tire wear.